Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a feature that you can probably tell that I am very enthusiastic about. On Thursday, OpenAI tweeted, by popular request, you can now branch conversations in ChatGPT, letting you more easily explore different directions without losing your original thread. I cannot even begin to tell you how many conversations I have in ChatGPT that are just endless, long strings where I will go back and circle up to some piece from eight responses up before and desperately hope it all works while trying to keep all the context. Now there is an actual UI solution to try to fork conversations into different areas, all keeping that original prompt in context. And I think that that is going to make a massive difference, especially for the sort of strategy and ideation work that I love using ChatGPT for. Now, this is very clearly a much demanded feature. McKay Wrigley wrote, have wanted this since like OG ChatGPT release. So useful. Testing Catalog actually noticed the feature when it started showing up in testing last week, writing, this could help researchers, power users, or anyone running comparative prompts as it reduces friction when exploring multiple approaches or when retracing steps is needed due to suboptimal outcomes in one branch. Now remember, as Sam Altman has started talking about GPT-6, he's been saying that it's all about memory and users having better control of context. This is a tiny little but still very significant nod in that direction and one that I think will be useful right away. Next up, a really cool update in how at least one company is thinking about their goals in the Vibe or Agenda coding space. Obviously, the stratospheric growth of the Vibe coding apps has been one of the big stories of the year. In fact, it's currently my pick for the most important AI phenomenon of 2025, and it's hard for me to see how that's going to be displaced by anything in just the next couple of months, although that, of course, could happen. And while the rapid pace of revenue growth is a clear metric of success, revenue alone doesn't capture how useful these products are to people. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong recently shared that around 40% of the company's daily coding is AI-generated, and he's trying to get it to over 50% by next month. But what was really interesting to me was when this week, lovable CEO Anton Osika focused in on a new way to measure how his product is performing. He posted, Lovable apps have officially been visited 100 million times in the last two months. With that milestone, we're changing Lovable's success metric to be proportional to the traffic users' products get. Because if our users succeed, we succeed. Now, this is something that you might remember came up when we were looking at the top 100 Gen AI consumer apps, that Andreessen Horowitz generated list. When they were talking about vibe coding, they were noting that there was some really meaningful signal in the traffic going not just to lovable.dev and replit.com, which is the places where users access the vibe coding tools, but on the domains where you can host the things that you build with those tools, i.e. lovable.app and replit.app. Projects on the replit.app domain had gotten up to a couple million monthly visits, while projects on the lovable.app domain had gotten all the way up to 10 million monthly visits. So now that seems to be what Antoine and Lovable are focused on when they think about the success of these agentic coding platforms. I think this is a great shift, one that will help us understand if and how we're moving past the novelty phase of agentic coding and into a time when this is just increasingly a way that people build real things. Moving over to new models. One thing that was a big topic of conversation in about the middle of last year, but has been a little bit more muted this year, is all of the work that's going into shrinking models to be able to run them on devices without touching the cloud. Still, that work is ongoing, and yesterday, Google CEO Sundar Pichai tweeted, Introducing Embedding Gemma, our newest open model that can run completely on device. It's the top model under 500 million parameters on the MTEB benchmark, and comparable to models nearly twice its size, enabling state-of-the-art embeddings for search, retrieval, and more. Now, the model appeared good enough to elicit a response from Elon Musk, who commented simply impressive. As an embedding model, this means it's used for AI search functions like RAG and semantic search rather than text generation. But obviously, what a company like Google is trying to do is to enable these features to be built into devices like their mobile handsets or deployed locally in sensitive areas where cloud-based models are less appropriate. These are the types of innovations that aren't going to be big, splashy announcements on the stages of Google I.O., but could be some of the most significant things when it comes into how your devices, your Android Pixel phones, your ultimate iPhones, etc., actually function and allow you to do new AI-enabled things. One M&A story today. Enterprise software giant Atlassian is acquiring the browser company for $610 million. The browser company are the creators of Dia, which is an agentic AI browser that is competing with, among others, Perplexity's Comet. Atlassian, if you're unfamiliar, offers a suite of work tools like ticketing management software Jira, and visual task management app Trello. 
This is Atlassian's largest acquisition since they bought video instruction platform Loom in 2023 for almost a billion dollars. Now, I should note that if you are watching the conversation around this on Twitter slash X, there is a lot of weird sour grapes and people being angry about how much the price was. I am completely and utterly disinterested in that entire discourse, but if you want to go find it, it's there. What's much more interesting to me is what this says about the state of the AI browser wars. Frankly, it's interesting to see an enterprise software company adding a browser to their suite. Until very recently, browsers have basically been an undifferentiated mass of Chrome forks. You might choose based on a particular set of privacy priorities or other features, but there wasn't all that much reason for an enterprise B2B company like Atlassian to offer their own browser. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. It seems pretty clear that they believe that the quality of AI infrastructure is going to be a key differentiating factor. And indeed, the central pitch of this is that Atlassian seems to want to take Dia and turn it into a work-focused AI browser. There is going to be a shift in what the company works on. Josh Miller, the browser company CEO, said, We talked a lot about shopping, making reservations, finding showtimes. That's going to go away in terms of our focus. Meanwhile, Atlassian CEO Mike Cannon-Brooks wrote that while rival browsers like Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, quote, do a very good job, they're built for everyone and limits what they can do for specialists. Our goal isn't 6 billion users. It's the billion knowledge workers who need a better tool. When it comes to the state of the conversation around this, browser company CEO Josh Miller is surprisingly candid. He basically said in no uncertain terms that he thinks that the winner of the AI browser space is going to be crowned in the next one to two years, and that for them to be able to compete, they needed bigger distribution than they could get. I've spent a lot of time recently thinking about the window of opportunity that we're in, and I agree entirely that this is the time for big moves. The winners of the next generation of business are going to be built in the next 12 to 24 months. And anything that anyone can do to skip the line and compete bigger is, on average, I think, going to be better. So congrats to the team over at Dia slash the browser company. Excited to see what they do with it in this work context. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode. 